Hi, this is Marsha from Marsha Neal Studio. I'm going to show you a quick way to make these zigzag bracelets. I have these kits on my website. The original design for the zigzag pattern, which is a bead, then the jump ring and another bead um, alternating on these leathers, is from my friend Leslie Watt of the Gossiping Goddess. So with these quick bracelets, I've used my ceramic disc bead and size 6 Mayuki glass seed beads. You can see it makes a really cute quick bracelet. Um, I use six millimeter twisted jump rings. It's made with a 16 gauge wire. So if you're looking um, to find them, that's what you want to look for. You can also use different size Mayuki beads or any seed bead. I prefer the Mayukis because they have a more uniform um, hole size, which when you're working with leather is really important. So uh, this is the one millimeter leather and I've cut the ends onto an angle. So what we're going to do is grab the two working ends and I put a bead on it. Now I'm looking at my disc bead to decide which bead, which side of the bead is going to be the top. So that top side is going to go onto the both leathers and I'm going to go ahead and pull that to the midpoint. You can see the little stop bead is basically holding it so it doesn't pop off. Tie a gentle overhand knot using both leathers at one time. Just go ahead and gently move it while you're pulling it to hold that disc bead snug. Now when I'm working with this leather, I'm going to train myself to keep both pieces parallel so that I will have a top string and a bottom string. The reason why is as you're doing this, you can see here I pick a bead up on the top leather jump ring over both. So now I'm going to pick one up on the bottom leather and the jump ring over both. And you're just going to work like this. Bead on the top leather and I'm moving it out of my way a little bit here. And then I'm going to pick up a jump ring over both. You're going to want to um, make sure you know which leather is the top and which one is the bottom. So as you see as I'm moving I'm constantly keeping at least one of my hands on the leather, holding them parallel. Now, as I'm moving it back, I don't just jam it up against that little knot. I move it and then I gently pull all the beads and the jump rings in a little at a time because I don't want the leather to get too twisted upon itself. Right now, as you're moving it down, it's the good time to straighten that out. See the pattern already forming. So, I just had a bead on the top string. As you can see, I'm keeping them parallel. So don't forget, don't go for the bottom bead. Go for a jump ring over both. Then the bottom string with the bead on it is next. Go ahead and work like this um, until you get it to be at least one time around your wrist. I like to work in one inch segments um, and then pull it down to the back. I don't like to let it go too far because if you realize that you've messed up your pattern, it's very easy just to take off that little bit and fix it. Here you can see we've gotten to a point where I'm going to go ahead and measure it around my wrist. I've stopped with a bead and I'm going to take it. Let's see if I can get this bead up on my wrist. <laughs> I'll tell you. All right. So you're going to see the bead will sit about right there. So this will fit around my wrist nicely. I'm going to go ahead and tie a gentle overhand knot with both of the pieces of leather. And this is going to finish the bracelet, meaning this is at the point where the beads will not fall off. We're going to tie a second knot so that that will create the loop. You can see the pattern's good. Okay, so now we're measuring. I'm just kind of going to estimate where I need to have that second knot. Gentle overhand knot. Don't tie it too snug yet. I'm going to go ahead and dry fit this real quick. One thing you want to remember is this loop. You don't want it to be too snug. You're going to be putting this on most of the time, you know, one handed unless you have somebody to help you. Um, and you want to be able to get that little stop bead in there as well as the disc bead. 
Once you figure that out, go ahead and tighten it down. And now you're going to get ready for some dangles. This part is completely optional. If you don't want to have little beads at the end, you can just go ahead and tie a couple knots and be done with it. Um, I like to have little extra beads. I just love these beads so much. So I don't use any kind of adhesive. I just tie my knots really nice and strong. If you wanted to use some kind of adhesive, I would recommend something like E6000. Take a look at the, um, you know, instructions, make sure you have proper ventilation. Also that it does work for sure on leather. So go ahead and, you know, keep adding these little beads here. Tie it around. And once you get it in there, you can cut off the extras. Now these kits are available through my website martianealstudio.com in many different colorways. Uh, if I can find beads that coordinate with any of my ceramic glazes, I will put a kit together. I absolutely love it. And I've got jump rings in silver, gold, and copper, both oxidized and bright metallic. So lots of options to make these really cool fun bracelets. Thanks, Leslie, for the inspiration. And voila, there you go.